In the opening sequences of the movie, we find a young lady on the phone to her mother in a large suburban house. She is in a panic, having just been bitten. Suddenly, there is a rattling at her front door. She manages to keep it closed, despite the attempted break-in. Whoever is outside then runs at speed around the house. Realizing she's left another door open, she rushes through to the dining room and shuts it. Seconds later something or someone crashes into the door and begins pounding at the glass. This smashes and she screams in fear. What is going on? Who is the intruder? This is movie shortens. Follow today to the movie titled, Assimilate 2019 to find out these answers. Be aware, there are spoilers. In the next scene, we are introduced to Zach and Randy, two friends who record local events via tiny cameras they carry around with them for their YouTube channel. They take the viewers to their neighborhood and several members of the local community, including the local preacher, Pastor Greg. It is a small town in rural Missouri where, apparently, no one ever locks their doors and there is nothing to do except wake up, eat and sleep. As the friends walk home, they are called over by their neighbor, Ms. Bysett, who is tending to her garden. She hands them an apple covered in hundreds of tiny bugs moving across it in a strangely uniform manner. As they take a look, they call out to another female resident walking past. However, she ignores them and marches on, dragging her child along with her. Next they head over to the lacrosse field, where they meet up with Kayla, who is also Zach's secret crush. They tell her about their channel and she suggests turning it into a reality TV show. Kayla's parents stroll over and inquire as to Zach's university plans, but it seems he doesn't have any. The five of them enjoy a relaxed conversation before going their separate ways. Randy then encourages Zach to ask Kayla out before it is too late. Later that night, from his desk and via a monitor, Zach helps Kayla with a computer issue. While they are chatting online, Kayla's brother Joey joins her in the two jest around. Joey is dressed up as a mutant and is in great spirits and full of energy. The affection between the three of them is clear. However, we also learn Kayla is bound for Peru to spend her holidays and will be going there soon. Next we are introduced to Zach's family, as his mom cooks dinner for the boys. She is surprised they are filming her. Zach's father is wheelchair bound and is a double amputee. He is also jobless and heavily reliant on medication, which he takes in their presence. We learn that Zach feels a strong sense of responsibility to take care of his parents. Later the two friends are outside taking a walk when they hear a piercing scream. It is emanating from Ms. Bisset's house. The two of them enter cautiously and call the authorities as they do so. There are strange creaking noises and they spot some drop of blood on the floor. Following these, they locate their neighbor hiding in a cupboard. She claims to have been bitten and has an open wound on her leg. Suddenly the creature that attacked her bursts out of the wall, scuttles across the floor and makes its escape over the window. The boys run after it, chasing it through a wooded area. They manage to keep up with it and follow it until it reaches a break in the trees. Peering through a gap from behind a log, we see the creature run straight towards a man and hop into a hamper. The man closes the lid and carries it to a shiny, black SUV. As the vehicle inches away, the friends are able to make out the driver. It is Pastor Greg. Concerned by this turn of events, they head over to the sheriff's office and show their video footage to his deputy, Josh Haywood. Haywood, however, is unconvinced by it. He accuses Zach and Randy of faking the video themselves. Unwilling to help, he sends them on their way. Disappointed by Haywood's reaction, the friends decide to confront the pastor themselves. They walk over to his church and enter, making their way down to the basement and along several corridors with blinking lights. At the end of one of these, they find Pastor Greg who is in a meeting with a sizable group of people including the sheriff. The pastor wears a strangely blank expression and is cold and aloof. The boys are shocked when he tells Zach that his dad is a junkie. The sheriff interjects in a similarly distant manner and the friends make their exit. Next they pay a visit to Ms. Bisset. They ask her if she saw Pastor Greg last night. However, it seems she has no memory of the events they witnessed. She denies being bitten and seductively reveals her upper thigh, showing there to be no bite mark. She then invites the both of them to her bedroom. Baffled by her behavior, they leave, but creep around the side of her house and peek in through a window. They see one man, who they later recognize from his tattoo, tied to her bed, before another scares them off. Later the boys meet up with Kayla. She tells them her father has been acting strangely since the morning, while her mom is missing. They head over to her house to help. As the three of them walk down the street they witness several of their neighbors acting in a very odd manner, attending to bonfires. Upon arriving at her house, her father stands up to greet them. He has an usually upright posture and speaks without expression or emotion. Zach requests to use the bathroom and heads upstairs. He follows some noises up to her attic, 
in which he finds Joey hiding. Knowing Zack is upstairs, Kayla's dad becomes restless and heads up there, shouting after Zack. Zack rushes to hide in the nearest bathroom, within which he finds what seems to be Kayla's mom. Her body twisted and dismembered in a washing basket. The friends hastily leave the house. Having caught images of the body on his camera, Zack shows his friends and they strut over to get Deputy Haywood. He returns to the house with them to investigate. However, he finds the body has been moved. Then, before they can make sense of it, Kaya's mother walks up to join her father. Kayla gives her a hug in relief, but senses something different about her, yelling that this person is not her mom. Her parents put this down to mental illness and are supported by Pastor Greg who is also in attendance. The friends leave and attempt to take Joey with them, but Kayla's parents refuse to let him go. Despite the odd behavior of the family, Deputy Haywood is annoyed and continues to remain cynical. Zack's parents are the next to be affected. The boys enter a barn to find his dad has regrown his legs and is able to walk towards them. Pastor Greg and a large group then arrive, release two of the creatures from hampers into the barn and shut its doors. Before long Randy is bitten by one. Zack then spots what appears to be a large, man-sized pupa. Suddenly a likeness of his mother, who is entirely naked, bursts from this and then runs around in a manic manner. She then locates his actual mother, who is lying motionless on the floor, and tries to drain the energy from her by clutching at her head. However, she is interrupted by Zack who stabs her in the guts with a pitchfork. The friends make it out of the barn thanks to Kayla, and the three of them head to Deputy Haywood's trailer on foot. Once there, he apologizes and finally accepts their story. Knowing Randy has been bitten, they realize he will soon be tracked down by his own alien likeness. This arrives and, with the help of the deputy's pistol, they keep it at bay. Before long hundreds more zombie-like people turn up and they push over the trailer. The law enforcement officer is then dragged out through a broken window. Now surrounded, they appear to have no hope. However, the heroic Randy creates a diversion. He heads outside, attracts the attention of all of those attacking them and leads them away in pursuit. This gives Zack and Kayla a chance to get away. Desperate to get help from the outside world, Zack attempts to upload his videos of the events they've witnessed, but there is no signal. The two of them head into the town to find both Joey and a getaway vehicle. They make their way through the crowds by mimicking the posture and actions of the copied people in their midst. While Zack searches for some van keys, Kayla enters a building in which parents are forcing their children to be bitten by the creatures. Here she finds Joey, but saddened by these events a tear escapes her eye, giving her away. Luckily, just as one of the creatures crawls up her body and she is about to be copied, Zack bursts in with the vehicle and saves her. Not long later, they pull over. As they chat in the front seat of the van, a group of the bugs previously witnessed on the apple slink together to form one of the bigger alien-like clawed creatures. This creeps towards them, pounces on Zack and bites him. They flee the vehicle and come to rest in a woodland glade. Here, bizarrely, what appears to be Randy approaches them and strikes up conversation about fishing there in days gone by. Knowing from his action he is a clone they strike him with a rock and drown him in a stream. Desperate to get their message out, the two of them head for a telecommunications hub to try to upload the content. They make it inside by once again aping the walk of the clones. Here they are confronted by their copies, desperate to get to them, to take over their lives. However, Sack and Kayla are able to evade them, enter the main computer room and directly upload their videos. Meanwhile, they devise a plan. They set off some gas, use a YouTube video to lure the clones into the room and then lock them inside. Their would-be attackers are left mesmerized by the pictures and voices in the videos, seemingly unable to tell these apart from real people. While the imposters collapse and die from inhaling the gas, Zack and Kayla make it away. They eventually get to a log cabin, which Kayla had told Joey to try to meet them at. Here they find him. They turn on the TV and are devastated to discover that the same situation has been occurring the world over, from China to Europe. Was their town the first or the last to fall victim to these strange creatures? We are left with a glimmer of hope in the final scene, however. We learn, through a rapidly increasing number of YouTube comments, that there are still many normal people that remain, also in hiding. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.